So today's video is for those who are just starting out with street photography or maybe you're revisiting street photography because you kind of left it dormant for a minute and you want to get back into it. Either way, I think these three tips will help give you the confidence to get out shooting today. Okay, so a lot of people may or may not know what street photography is. Uh, and rightfully so, because there's so many subgenres, like the one that's probably the most popular, which is documenting strangers in public spaces. But there's also other subgenres like street scenes, uh, architectural street, minimalism in street, street portraiture. So the list goes on and on and it keeps expanding because you know this is a art form so people are adding what they think street photography is to them uh, and I think that's amazing. So my experience shooting street over the years has obviously evolved um, but there's always been a common thread and that is documenting things that move me, that make me feel something. Now, you, granted, you get better over time. Like when I started, I was taking pictures of a dog or a book. And I thought, wow, some of these photos are pretty awesome. But clearly they weren't. And I got better over time and I got more specific over time. And then that evolved. You, you know, you get more inspiration. You learn more about your camera. You learn more about the genre and it evolves. But at the core of that, I always tried to have fun and not overthink what I was doing. So with that said, here are three tips that really helped me out a lot and I actually wish I knew them earlier. So if you're at the beginning of your journey, this is the perfect time to take in these three tips. Let's get into it. Okay, so tip number one, plan ahead. Now this is very hard to do when you're excited and you feel like you're just gonna go off of your energy and your vibe and I'm just gonna go out there and shoot and hit all these shots. Well, that's a cool way to think about it, but the reality is you're not prepared. And when you're starting something new, you wanna give yourself the best chance to get the best results. One way to do that is to plan ahead. So now that you know your location, you know that you got this eight block radius, you're shooting downtown, and you don't have to worry about that. Mentally, it's been checked off. Therefore, you're actually giving yourself confidence um, before you even step out the door. And then part of that is to stay at that location for at least 45 minutes to an hour. Now again, that might seem like an eternity when you're excited and you're just starting and you're starting to snap away and you just want to shoot, shoot, shoot. But what you're doing there is you're learning to observe. So you're in this location, you're saying, okay, look at these buildings. This is, this is a pretty cool angle. You're changing your angle, your perspective, your POV, but you're also um, observing where people go. Um, uh, where the light is hitting the buildings. You're learning to observe and you're gaining patience along the way. There is nothing better than being as organized as possible before you step out the door. Okay, so tip number two, which could also technically be tip number one, bring less gear. If you've been on this channel for any amount of time, you know that that's what I preach because that's what I practice. Bringing less gear means less thinking. Again, mentally, before I step out the door, I know I'm not bringing a bunch of stuff. I prefer to use point and shoots when I'm doing street. And for the last five or six years, I kind of just stick to one camera and that is the Ricoh GR2. You've heard it on this channel before. And if you haven't, it's a camera worth checking out because it checks off all the boxes. And what are those boxes when we're starting street photography? Number one, it's lightweight. Number two, it's compact. So it's gonna get in your pocket. You don't have to worry about it, but also it's unassuming. You just look like a tourist shooting with a small camera. So that's why I like point and shoots. But for you, it might be uh, your mobile device. It could be the phone that's on you right now. So it's not about going out and buying new gear and saying, I'm gonna be a street photographer. If you got the cash, go do that. But if you already have equipment on you and you're just trying to understand if this is something that you wanna do, a mobile device is great. Matter of fact, that's what I used for the first like six or seven years was my mobile device. I really pushed it to see um, what I could do with my phone. Some of my favorite to date are shot with my phone. And, and that again is under the thinking of less is more, lightweight, focusing on your scene, focusing on your subject and not the gear. These are all things that help your street photography evolve really, really quick. Okay, so tip number three, shoot at F8 or F9. Why F8 or F9, ta photo? Let me tell you why. Well, again, if we think back to those mental notes, less thinking, less gear, organizing your thoughts before you even leave the house, and this falls into that category. 
f8 means that you have a medium size aperture right but if you shoot with a large aperture like say f 1.4 f 2.8 now you have to worry about getting your subject in focus and making sure you hit that subject in focus and in street photography as you know a lot of times things are coming at you going fast and so an f-stop like f 2.8 is just going to give you more things to worry about it doesn't mean you can't do it but there is more to think about and if you're just starting out you should be thinking less and worrying more about composing and shooting things that you like so i love shooting at f8 f9 you really get a chance to think less about all the other things and just focus on composition all right so those are my three tips but here is a bonus tip for you of course i always got a bonus tip and that is doing research in the genre see who the greats were that came before you see why they did what they did um, see what their life story is and of course check their workout and not just googling i'm talking about getting a photo book in your hands something that you can actually hold and tangibly look at and feel and see where this photographer came from so yeah i recommend any photo books if you can get your hands on them it's truly going to be an advantage for yourself because it actually number one slows you down you're not sitting there on your phone looking at inspiration in this tiny little screen or even on your home computer you're actually holding the book and seeing their images from their pov these are great endless sources of inspiration some of my favorites are vivian meyer uh, gordon parks ernst haas joe merowitz saw lighter these are photographers that slowly over time i learn to appreciate uh, what they did how they did it i mean vivian meyer just kind of blew my mind over and over uh it almost made me not want to shoot for a while because i was like wow if that's the bar then i don't know what i'm going to do but then uh, when i read more about how she went about it and how much she actually practiced and shot every single day i realized it was very attainable to start creating on different levels and um, really pushing myself and understanding light, understanding shadow, understanding composition. All right, so I hope those tips really helped you out today. Uh, again, don't overthink it, practice a lot, and uh, don't be so hard on yourself. Go out there, have some fun. If you can bring a friend along and wanna shoot with them, that always makes it better, a little bit more of a relaxed atmosphere. Um, but yeah, take it in. Let me know in the comments if there's other hacks or tips that you want to share with others who are starting out or revisiting street photography for the first time in a long time. Either way, stay creative and believe in yourself. Peace.